Hello guys, it's Trogdor again, and this is a showcase of my redstone timer, or countdown timer. Um, as you can see, it's set to 99, and that's because it can count down from 99 all the way down. Um, and I'll just go through what each part is, because um, I probably won't do a tutorial for this. I might do a tutorial on each of the separate parts because uh, some of them are useful for other things. But here's uh, my dual seven segment display. Um, obviously that's good for uh, showing you what it's counting down to. Um, this is all busing for the display. Um, this big square section of interlocking uh, lines is the decoder. And if you notice, there's actually two sets. This top section and then this bottom section. And that's each section is for each number. Or each section has a number or a digit that it corresponds to. Uh, the bottom one is the the seconds or the the ones section, and the top one is the uh, tens. Um, but yeah, this section right here, I just stacked uh, the dec decoders and the NORLATCH arrays on top of each other. or the two sections, they're side by side. So this is the decoder right here. And then this over here is the sequential memory uh, unit that I ended up making myself. Uh, again, this is one, and that's the net other one. Um, but, yeah, I, I built this. This is basically what this is the brains of it. This is uh, what controls the countdown uh, thinking, if you will. This just decodes it so that the uh, s display can recognize the information in these. Um, but yeah, basically that's the brains of it and it's ran by this small clock, it's just this small one. You got to uh, put a pulse into it, and that's what this right here is. This little square is a pulse shortener. And it will put the pulse into the clock so that we have that short pulse running into the clock and it will just keep on going, and that's how you start it. The switch right here is to stop it. When you power it, uh, the clock will stop once it reaches that point. Uh, you want that up when you're uh, doing it. And to start it, you have to have that lever up, and then you press this button on this pulse shortener. This pulse shortener right here is if you want to just count down uh, you know step down one each time if you press it it will go down like right now it's at 99 if you pressed if you press that one this one right here once go down to 98 and that that was basically just for debugging so I could you know step it down and check each of the out or the yeah the outputs but basically to start it up you want to press that button or have that lever up and then you press this button right here and it will start let's go ahead and go look at it as you can see it is counting down and then yeah right now I have to fix that where it kind of shows uh, the last digit over the digit trying to display it makes it look a little bit derpy I'll be able to fix that, I'm sure. It's just going to take a little bit of time. This is still early on in construction of this. But as you can see, it does go down. 
you know, 81, 80, and then 79, 78, 77, and so on. So I will show you what's going on. This clock goes around, and once it hits here, turns on, and it puts a pulse into these. And these are the inputs to my Norlatch array. And that's what this is. And I have it set up so each time a pulse goes in, this goes up by one. And see how they're all powered? And it resets, and it will come back over here. Those torches are what we're looking at. And this is your one, or your, uh, your ones digit. And that's why this is a lot faster. And basically when it gets to this one, it will reset the ones. So it will go back down to nine. Put a pulse up into this. And this is the same thing we have down there. But instead of being hooked up to the clock, it's hooked up to the last digit of our ones thing. So when that hits that last digit, we'll see if we can get it to go. Um, but anyways, when it does actually get up there, it will uh, hit that, which will send a pulse into it. And we got the same thing right here. See how it's all lit up? All those torches right are lit up and if we wait a second we'll see the next one light up and there you go and then we'll just keep on doing that now the problem with that is we need these torches to be separated so when say this one's on or since this one's on we don't want power from these so that's what this little section right here is this little line right here is what is called a pre-decoder. And it just, you know, since that one's the last one on, this right here is on. And it's going to cycle here in a second. But this one's on, but all the other ones are off, even though the those on, it just cycled. But yeah, that's just so instead of having all of these on, we get a torch on, one torch at a time. This is also my own design. It took me a little bit to figure this one out. Um, a lot of this stuff might be able to be a little bit smaller. Um, again, this is like my first pass. This stuff is all ugly. I have to, you know, figure out designs for a pulse shortener and a clock that looks decent because that looks a little bit weird, but it works. But yeah, the timer right now just auto resets. So once it gets down to zero, it will go back over to 99. Um, if you wanted to do something with this timer, um, you would hook up your, uh, basically right here. If you come off of here somewhere, like if you take a block, not right there, but right here. This is your output. That redstone line right there, that's your output. And that will send a pulse out. You might have to... You might have to use a pulse lengthener. Because uh, the pulse might be too short, but... I'll leave that to you guys, but this is basically where you take it off, because once it hits zero, zero, that's going to uh, hit a pulse. That will be, like, say if you want this just to be an elaborate timer for a TNT bomb, hook that right up to your TNT, and, yeah, it'll set it off for you. Um, that's pretty much it. That's all you really need to know to stop it. You uh, pull this down until you don't see anything flashing on this line anymore. And then you can put it back up. And that will actually stop the timer at wherever it's at, 16. Um, I haven't 
made a uh, connected reset, so you have to reset each digit by itself. Um, for the tens digit, it's this run right here. So if you go do, not by your decoder, but on this Norlatch array right here, this button right here will reset that to nine. Then you have to go underneath, and there's one in the same place just right underneath it on the other Norlatch array. And if you click both of them, your, uh, yeah, it's reset for you. Then you can just, you know, mess with it more. And uh, feel free to, you know, make this design better if you think you can. And share share with me what you do. Uh, definitely will be interesting to see what you guys can come up with. But I will leave the download to this. This is my Redstone World, too. So there's other things here that you can look at. I don't have my uh, my full uh, redstone lock build in here or my full minecart station in here either, even though I think there's a prototype for probably both of them. I'm not sure. But yeah, I'll leave a link to the download of this world for you guys, and I will park the character right by the timer since that's the main main part of this video so okay well like and subscribe if you uh, enjoyed the video or the map and uh, stay tuned because yeah I have a few ideas on a few other videos so yeah bye